Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to speak with you for a moment uh, about um, a phenomenon uh, called or um, named synchronicity, uh, one that has been uh, documented and detailed by uh, the um, psychologist uh, Carl Jung, um, one of the contemporaries of uh, Sigmund Freud, all right? So I did some research about uh, synchronicity and basically all of my experiences traveling around the world, seeing my birthday 10-9 uh, in uh, very peculiar uh, circumstances uh, are basically uh, experiences I've had uh, with synchronicity. Now, uh, I wanna speak, I wanna describe what happened to me today and uh, give you some ideas about uh, just, I just want to share this story with you, and I'll try to make it as uh, short as possible. Today was basically an uneventful day. Um, much of the day I spent uh, not doing anything at all. Uh, I was quarantining, and uh, between, you know, having, uh, eating some meals or snacking, uh, watching a little bit of television, and then um, watering uh, the plants in the backyard, uh, that's pretty much how I how my time was uh, divided. Now, later on in the day, I received a call from my mom and dad and they needed me to run an errand, which I did, okay? Um, none of this was planned. It was just a matter of me uh, following their orders. So I said, okay, I'm on the way. I'm gonna take care of it. I go and I take care of their errand. And um, what did I wear? That's important. So uh, I'm wearing a pair of shorts right now which you can't see, um, but I'm wearing my shorts. I was wearing uh, this uh, T-shirt right here, one of my uh, favorite uh, T-shirts from the Bang Bang shop in uh, Thailand. I bought this in uh, last year, 2019. Uh, Bob Marley here. And uh, so I was wearing this T-shirt and I was also wearing my Rasta shirt right here, which I picked up in Ethiopia. And of course, I'm wearing my, my Rasta cap, all right? Throw this on for you. I was very Rasta, very heavily Rasta, okay? You know, sure, you can see the uh, Ethiopian flag behind me, but when I walk outside, I'm not always, you know, this Rasta down. Uh, my hair may give the appearance or uh, the impression that I am a Rasta. Um, I did have an experience when I was walking down the street some Rastas yelled at me from the car. They said, Rastafari! And I, I looked and I was like, okay. You know, because, you know, I haven't, you know, proclaimed that I am a Rasta, but I certainly um, do not deny or uh, reject or, uh, you know, negate anything that the Rastas believe, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for the, uh, for the Rastafari and, uh, you know, faith because it is an Amharic, uh, excuse me, not Amharic, an Abrahamic. It is uh, out of the tradition. The, uh, Ras the, the, the Rastafarians fall under the uh, Abrahamic uh, religions. So, you know, I'm Christian. There's no real, real beef, okay? All right, so here's, here's my story about today. As I was wearing my Rasta gear, I just happened to wear that. Just happened to wear my Bob Marley shirt. Just happened to wear um, my uh, Rasta shirt. I And I drove to uh, take care of my errand. I did the errand and then on my way home, I decided to, um, well, I decided to, uh, to finish the errand. Mom and dad asked me uh, to, run, to make the errand. And then I decided to go to the uh, ATM so I can get some money to go to the uh, local Trader Joe's and get some food specifically some meat. Anyhow, so after running the errand, going to the ATM, went to the Trader Joe's, got my meat, and I was on my way home when I decided that instead of going directly home and maybe preparing a meal for myself, that I would just go to the local In-N-Out burger and buy a burger um, to eat. Fast, quick, I didn't have to, it was, you know, simple. Just in, in and out essentially, right? All right, so I go over to the In-N-Out and there's this crazy long line and I'm like, okay, 
this is not a good idea. I'm gonna be in line for a long time. I'll waste gas uh, waiting in this line and I'm just not gonna do this. So I got out of that line and then what happened? Now, maybe subconsciously I was thinking about Bob Marley, Rastafarians or what have you, but maybe or maybe not, that doesn't, whether I was thinking about uh, Bob Marley and Rastafarians um, is unknown because there was a Jamaican restaurant there. There was a Jamaican restaurant near this uh, In-N-Out over in Culver City. And as I was leaving the In-N-Out, I decided that I would go directly to the uh, Jamaican spot because one, we're all about Black Lives Matter right now. And I'm thinking, hey man, let me support a local black business, skip the In-N-Out, you know, burger franchise that's been around 50 plus uh, years. Let's go to the local mom and pop Jamaican spot. And so I said, fine. Now, as I'm driving over there, I begin to realize, hey, I'm wearing my Bob Marley. I'm wearing my Rastafari. I'm wearing um, synchronicity. Hey, there I am. I'm the Rastafari going to the Jamaican restaurant. So, hey, you know. I, I was a little self-conscious wearing all of this, you know, because it's like, ah, uh, you're doing too much. You're trying to be something you're not, Larry, chill out. But, you know, that's, that's, that really wasn't, uh, wasn't it at all. When I got in there, um, I'm sure, you know, people uh, noticed, you know, how I was dressed, but maybe, maybe that, that made them feel more comfortable because I noticed that um, the owner uh, told a delivery uh, guy, told him, hey, when you come in here, if you have an order, you have to tell us. You say, hey man, I'm, I'm here to pick up an order. You don't just stand around and wait you know, quietly, you have to speak up. You know? It was like the energy, energy shifted. Whereas on any, other, on any given day, you know, people are subdued and they're like, okay, they know how this business is run. So we're just gonna let the business run. But today it was like, hey, you gotta participate in this business. You can't just walk in here and expect things to run smoothly. And in fact, things were not running smoothly. There was a whole fire in the back and it was pretty scary. <laughs> the woman who was before me was like, hey, I'm gonna get out of here Boy, this place blows up. All I wanted was some jerk chicken and, you know, I don't want to die before getting my jerk chicken. So she said, oh my gosh. She opened up the door and she stood outside and I was close to the door like, I'm with you, sis. All right. So there I am, all Bob Marley'd up and everything. And I'm just thinking like, this wasn't planned. This was not planned. Um, I just decided I would go to the, uh, the nearest restaurant you know, uh, to the In-N-Out Burger um, that I preferred, you know, to go to, and that was the Jamaican restaurant. And there I was, dressed in as dressed as Jamaican as I could possibly be. So that was a huge synchronicity, syn synchronous uh, moment, right? Okay, so I get the food, I go home, and I'm ready to chow down, and I'm enjoying the meal immensely, and I'm just like whoa, this is delicious, man, this is wow, ooh, the spices, the flavors, I'm just like, yes, 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 wow. Now, um, I decide to sit and watch television as I'm eating. And I turn on the television, I turn on, I go to my uh, Apple iTunes account, and I pull up a, um, an episode of one of uh, Anthony Bourdain's um, TV shows. And I said, yeah, you know, Bourdain was all about eating uh, meals um, internationally. So he, he's, he's, his spirit is very much, um, you know, welcome at, in this moment. Because here I am having a jerk chicken, um, you know, meal. Because I don't always go for jerk chicken. I don't always go to the Jamaican restaurant. On regular, I, regularly I would go to, I would cook a meal at home. And if I don't cook a meal at home, <clears throat> I'll go to the Ethiopian restaurant, okay? So, yeah, all right. Now, yeah, because Ethiopia is always on my mind, right? All right, so anyway, I'm eating my meal, and I turn on the television, and I decide to watch 
the Ethiopian episode of one of Anthony Bourdain's uh, shows. Uh, what is it? Parts Unknown and what have you. <clears throat> I'm watching it, enjoying it. You know, I find it interesting and what have you. I'm eating my meal and everything is wonderful. I finish my meal. And what happens? This has happened to me before where I've gone to look at my IG feed and on my IG feed, something captures, catches my eye, captures my attention. And there it was, someone posted a picture of Anthony Bourdain to Instagram. And I said, whoa, that's interesting that they would post Anthony Bourdain to Instagram because I was just watching Anthony Bourdain while I was eating my meal. Wow, that's another synchronous moment. So take this further, I'm, as I'm reading the, the IG post, I'm realizing that today, June 8th, 2000, on, two years ago, on June 8th, 2018, today is June 8th, 2020, two years ago, Anthony Bourdain died. So that's my, my story about synchronicity. It's a little weird that I was wearing all of this Jamaican stuff that I was, that I went to that Jamaican restaurant. It's a little weird that as I'm eating my, my meal, I'm watching Anthony Bourdain. And then I discover that today was the day that we lost Anthony Bourdain. It's very interesting. Very interesting. All those details are very interesting how they just lined up like that. Unplanned, completely unplanned. And I'll tell you the one thing that, that got me about this is, oh, I remember where I was when this happened. I was in Madrid, Spain, uh, two years ago on this day when uh, Anthony Bourdain uh, died. I was in Madrid and that news was uh, so shocking. I was in Madrid, Spain, yep. That was devastating news at that time. Now, the, the one aspect, there's another aspect to this story. There's another aspect to this whole synchronicity uh, thing that I want to share. And that is all of these experiences, all of, all of our experiences, um, things are always happening around us. Things are always happening around us. But if we're not paying attention to them, then we do not then we're not tied, we're not tapped into our, our other sense, you know, intuition, right? And I'll give you an example because my mother called me earlier today and gave me some sad news that um, someone that she knows and someone that uh, I recently uh, met had passed away, all right? This person died. Now, it was, I believe it was two days ago, just two days ago when I was near uh, this person's home. And I had been near that person's home before when that person was alive. And there was a certain energy that that person had. Well, two days ago when I visited that, when I was near that person's home, I didn't feel that same energy. And I, you know, something told me, or something said to me, you know, hey, you know, that energy is missing. But I didn't pick up on it and I didn't, you know, I didn't throw myself into, I didn't give, my, give all of my attention to that. I was distracted thinking of other things. Had I done so, maybe we would have learned of that person's passing at that time. So things all around us, things are happening, energy is happening, there's, there's, there's energy out there. We receive messages, we know things that potentially are gonna happen before they do happen. And events do line up. 
I don't know. These are my experiences. This is exactly what happened. Today is uh, June 8th, 2020. And those are my stories. Peace. Thanks for listening. I'm Larry Legend.